Today I got a 2007 E350. You can hear the cooling fan coming on. Well, you might be able to hear it. Just comes on and off for no reason. Just whizzes real loud and shuts off. Sometimes doesn't shut off at all. So that's what we're diagnosing today. Car is off right now. I hear the fan. it to shut it up here's a four pin connector basically you got a power and a ground to the fan module and then these two are also power so one of them is going to be key on power the second one is going to be pulsed power from the engine control module um, it's almost the same for all Mercedes fans so one thing we're going to check for is corrosion in the wires I'll I'll take a closer look at that, see if any wiring is damaged anywhere. But one thing I did already notice is that the front fuse box is a little loose. Okay, and I don't like that because any control mo any any Mercedes with a loose fuse box cover, water can run right into the SAM. So I'm going to take that up and see how it looks in there, and hope for the best for the customer. Excuse my, excuse my tripod work. So unlock, yep, only one side was locked. The other lock is closed, but it wasn't catching. All right, so. Fish that out of there. And so far it looks okay. So far. All right. A we'll couple relays. I don't see no corrosion. Looks extremely clean. Very good. So far, so good. Really good. I like it. All right. So, next step hook up the scanner and check for codes. All right. So, fans going on high speed. I got my new iCarsoft 2.0. It's a newer one compared to the MB2. Uh, I'll have a video showing the differences. Um, so we'll go to diagnostics and bends. And that's the option we got. So 211 E class. All right, and let's check the build date. Uh, the build date is, see it, 0406. All right. So, it is the middle guy, 0406. All right. And this is a sedan. And this is gasoline. And this one's an O, well, let me make sure. 056. Yep, 056. Okay. Again, the VIN tells you the models. And smart scan, I guess they change it from automatic to manual. Smart scan means it runs the test of all the control modules. And manual means you just go and pick your module. So I'll just do a smart scan to get it over with. And I will pause the video and come back when it's done. Scan is done. It's a damn new wire. The scan is done. We're going to go to the six cylinder engine module, see what codes are in there. All right. Whoa. Only one code for the intake tumble flap. All right. Well, that's not gonna help, bastard. All right. 
right, so we'll get out of here. And I will go to the air conditioner because that's what else turns the fan on. No fault code in the air conditioner. So far we're over two. Might have to actually use brains on this one. All right. Driver side Sam may also play a role. And the fan also, no fault code. So, basically, if we have no fault codes in any module pertaining to the fan, yet the fan kicks on when it wants to, that's telling me we have a fan issue. What I'm going to have to do is catch it in the act and verify so I'll try to do that right now it's not going off so I'll wait till it goes off all right so here's what I'm finding zero percent activation from the live data all right I got this from the engine module v6 then I went to view data and then electric suction fan for engine or air conditioning and it tells me the request right now the engine module or ac is not requesting the fan on so go to the fan connector and start messing with it There we go. Now the fan's coming on. Zero request. All right. Some problems in here somewhere. Still on. It's either it's shorting or there's a wire broken. Why there's no code? I don't know yet. Nothing always has to make sense in the car, right? Let me check that wiring in there. All right, so watch this. I'm checking the signal wire. Don't laugh at this, but I'm checking the signal wire and that's the reference voltage because it's not activating the fan. All right, so now, watch this shit. I thought it was in the wiring harness, it's not. It was coincidence. Watch this. See that? Look at that. Look at that. You know what I'm doing? Tapping the engine module. Give it a second. Look at that, changing the voltage. Look at that, crazy, huh? Bad engine module. So basically how most Mercedes fans work is the brown wire is ground all time. The fat red wire is power all the time. The red wire with the green stripe it's a small terminal, it's gonna be key on battery voltage. And then this other wire, green with blue, or depending on whatever car, it could be a different color, that's the signal from the engine module. Almost all cars, the engine module activates the fan. In some models, it's the SAM, which is the front left fuse box, but not in this one. So as you witnessed, there's a damn engine module. Uh, I'd like to say I'm surprised, but I'm just more surprised that you can knock on it and it changes the voltage, but these engine modules in a 2006 and 2007 E-Class, C-Class, CLK, CLS, 
they're all problematic. I don't want to say junk, but they're problematic. So that's the issue. All right, so after having the engine control module out to a company in Michigan, which I will never send to again, they had it a month and a half, never replied, never emailed back, gave us some bullshit story about how they couldn't do anything with it and just refunded us the money. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go against everything I know and try to swap the EEPROM from his failed control module to a junkyard control module. So wish me luck. I got a piece of board. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna secure the control module to the wood, clamp the wood to the table to keep it from moving. And then I'm gonna to try to get the EEPROM off of there and into this one over here. So we'll see how it goes, man. All right, I got no idea what I'm doing. I mean, I do, but never done it before. So there's the EEPROM I'm gonna take out and uh, we'll see how this goes. Wish me luck. So after lots of trial and error, I got his original one and I sent it out to a company or a guy in uh, New York who was able to swap the VINs. And my uh, guy Mike, well it's backwards, I don't know why it's backwards. My guy Mike says that uh, it worked fine. So I went out to the car. This thing's been a nightmare. There we go. It's running. It's running. It's good. I basically bought a used junkyard computer, sent it out to a guy in New York. He swapped the VIN information and plug and play. Works like a dream. Um, I will never use the guy in Michigan. They had my control module for a month and a half. 
They didn't give me no information uh, and sent it back saying that he couldn't read the module, which was, which was a lie because I can read the module all day long. There's no reason he shouldn't have been able to do what this other guy just did. Um, so all in all, uh, find a guy that can swap the ECU data. When I swapped the um, EEPROM, what I couldn't find was dedicated information showing a second chip that needed to be swapped that actually had the immobilizer data on there. So basically I was dead in the water. I spent time swapping chips between modules and it didn't do anything, wasted a bunch of time. Um, that and it's pretty, pretty technical. Uh, don't drink an energy drink before you try to solder. Um, this is my first trial and error for this kind of thing. And the only way you know how to do stuff right is to do it wrong. And you know, I, I took a chance, the module was bad anyways. So, uh, you know, what's the harm in trying? The junkyard was nice enough to swap out the module. Um, when I plugged in the first junkyard module after I swapped the EEPROM chip, it didn't work. So then I tried to also go into like my scanner's uh, drive authorization relearning. And after that, it, it wouldn't read the info. So I think I think something happened between the EEPROM and the immobilizer data where it like locked itself out. I couldn't read it no more. I kept kicking my scanner out every time I tried to go to the drive authorization menu. So basically, unless you can have someone use those systems to swap in and out the, the VIN information and the immobilizer data, it's useless trying to swap an EEPROM, at least in this control module. Um, so live and learn, but uh, customer's getting his car back and it's been here two months so far all because a radiator fan was kicking on. So, ah, hate cars, hate cars, but this is what, this is what helps you, ex, you know, gain experience to know, to know what else can happen out there and, and what not to do in scenarios. So, um, subscribe, hit like, hit me up on www.cartechconnect.com if you need car help. I diagnose cars online. Um, that's it, thanks, have a good one.